What's going on guys, welcome to MDOR. So today I'm answering a couple of questions and I'm doing a rear windshield on my Can-Am Maverick X3. And there's a couple of reasons why. All right, so the biggest thing when people get their brand new machine is they will put on a windshield and they will put on a roof. Doesn't matter which kind of roof, those are like the two primary things that most people put on. I'm running an aluminum roof. This one has the flat cross members on top that you swap out. So basically the roof sits flat versus having that huge uh, hump over the top and I'm running a bent metal windshield. So having a roof and a windshield has its drawbacks. Now it's great from rain and other stuff and it's actually, it was just raining here. One of the biggest issues is the massive amount of dust. I mean, it just, it just goes. So I'm like, I definitely need a back window. I need to come up with something to cover this. If you ride in a dusty condition, you'll see that the entire front will get just hammered with dust. So what creates the problem essentially is the airflow goes across the top and it creates a vacuum. Really the spiral of air that goes through the back and it ends up bringing everything back to the front. Now you even get engine heat. You start getting a lot of heat building up along the bottom. To combat that, BRP and a bunch of other companies like Bent Metal make vents in the windshield for those hot days to try to get some more air moving across. Now, the major problem for me is the dust. And especially when you're on the dunes, the fine sand, it'll start getting sucked up in the back and you'll start feeling getting hit in the back of the head with sand. So in order to prevent that, you need a back windshield. Today, to fix this issue, I am going to be installing a back windshield. One of the other things that it should be helping with as well is the noise. The noise coming off from the back, from the engine. That's also one of the things that the back window should help with. The windshield that I'm using is from Kemimoto and I'll put a link in the description as well as a coupon code. I am running a chase bar on the back and I'm also running two speaker pods in the back. So in order to install a back windshield, I do have to remove my pods and I'm gonna have to take out my chase bar, so we're gonna work on that. We're gonna figure out how to mount that up afterward. In order to fit my chase bar, I might have to slightly modify it. It's actually a pretty nicely cut piece. The edges are super clean. It comes with a protective film from both sides, so once you're done installing it, you can uh, peel this off so you don't end up scratching it up as you're doing the installation. So the windshield comes with your instruction packet. It is. Pretty simple. Here is the hardware, and you get Velcro ties, some screws, and you also get clamps to clamp your windshield to the side. So as far as the speaker pods, I'm gonna have to come up with a different solution, uh, but for me, the rear glass at this point is more important with the dust and the heat than the speakers are. So I'm gonna get started on ripping out my speakers and the chase bar, and we'll work on installing the windshield. All right, so I got everything taken out and I am ready to smack in that windshield. So before sliding it in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expose the spots for the bolts and also for the Velcro straps. To put it through, you gotta go in between the bars here, just so you don't have to bend it to get it in. Putting the first strap. So these little guys, we're gonna just slide on here, over the glass, one behind the glass, one over the glass. And 
And just like that, you can't even see it, <laughs> but you can't even see it. Well, it's actually a good thing. And I think it actually looks really good. It fits fairly decent and I don't have it completely tightened up yet just because I'm gonna have to modify it a little bit to put my chase bar back on. I think for the price, this is great and it's gonna solve my problem of continuous dust and heat inside the cab. Technically, it should make these vents more functional once they're open, obviously. Pretty much done. I actually did install my chase light back on there. I did have to drill two holes in there, which wasn't a big deal. Other than that, it actually looks pretty good. It fits well and doesn't seem like there's any major vibration or anything. All right, so let's take it on a test drive and see how it does. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you liked the video, make sure you hit the like button, smash that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, later.